We're going to talk about the programming features of the XR10 Pro G2S. That is right, nerd friends. Welcome back and thanks for tuning in. We're going to take a quick look through the programming features as well as what they all do. I think that the names, where they are, that's great and all, but we want to talk about how to use them, when to use them, all that fun stuff. Like any of the XE Run Speed Controls, there's a programming port in the top. That's where your programmer goes into. XE Run stuff works with the LCD box. That's the one with the blue screen. Or they also work with the OTA, which is the Bluetooth wireless device as well. Um, I have the fan unplugged so we don't have to listen to it. I have a charged two cell battery pack plugged in, my programmer box, and all you do is turn on the speed control, light comes on, then you do have to tap that enter button to get everything started. So we get in there, it shows you your profile name and then you're into the action and the items get moved by pushing the item button. You can change the values up and down and then you hit okay to save things. If you don't hit okay, it won't save the changes. I think a lot of folks, I get emails every once in a while, I make changes and it's it's not saving. It's because you gotta hit okay. It's just because the box shows it doesn't mean anything happens. So we're gonna cycle through these and talk about what each of them do. We get a lot of emails that my, my reverse doesn't work and that is because they default to the forward and brake. Racing classes don't allow reverse in some places, so the reverse turns off. You can turn that on here uh, by changing it to forward reverse brake. And if you want instant reverse, like rock crawl style, that's option as well. Don't ever do that, that's bad. Uh, next item is reverse force. This is the strength of your reverse. A lot of times full reverse is not a good thing, so it allows you to adjust that power. The cutoff voltage, this is in regards to the LiPos. It lets you pick what cells you have it set to or what specific voltage, if you will. So if you want a specific cutoff voltage, you can do that, or you can set it to auto and it just does it nice and safely for you. Um, ESC thermal protection, obviously slightly adjustable. You can turn it up or down one setting and you can turn it off. And the same thing for the motor thermal protection. Now, one thing to know about the motor thermal protection, this only works on hobby wing motors because they're kind of the only ones that have the temperature sensor inside. Uh, BEC voltage, that's the power to your receiver and your servo. You can adjust that in 0.1 increments. Look at that thing go. All the way down to five, up to 7.4. Uh, remote off. This is when you want to turn your car off by holding the brakes for a real long time. You can hold them for like, I think it's a five count and it'll turn the speed control off. Problem is you have to walk over and turn it back on because it doesn't have a remote on feature. I mean, you can't. So this, this, uh, a lot of times this causes people problems. They're like, Hey, I pull into the pits. I hold my brakes. Or even if like you were to adjust your radio weird, it'll make it turn off on its own. Uh, number 17 is your sensor mode. Now there are this is mostly full sensor all the time if your motors are in good shape, especially if you're using hobby wing motors. And for a lot of the other motors that are out there, it's okay most of the time. But if you do have any issues, you can change these to hybrid mode. And what it does is it kind of it turns the sensors off at higher speeds or when there's going to be a problem. And it's just for noisy motors or off-brand motors, stuff like that. But for the most part, full sensor is okay. But if you do have any like hiccups or weird throttle feel after, you know, everything should be okay. First thing I always recommend, try another motor. Next thing is try that, that sensor mode change. Moving right through here. Motor rotate. Now this is your motor rotation. If you want the forward operation of the motor to change, you can do it here. Don't ever switch your radio to make the motor go the right, right way. You wanna, if in a sensor setup, you gotta do it through the settings in the speed control. In a sensor less setup, you can switch wires, but for a sensor setup, you definitely have to have this feature in the speed control itself. And there's only two settings, one direction or the other. So that's pretty straightforward. Um, the phase AC swap, this is a new one. You turn this on or off, and what this is allows you to do is change the orientation of the wires on the motor. I'm looking for a motor here. In some vehicles, the, the motor points this way or this way, and as the speed control wires come in, they're either gonna lay flat or the outside two, oh, that's, that's nice, the outside two have to get crossed. This allows you to swap the A and the C wire designation from the speed control. You have to do that, obviously, before you hook it all up or you're gonna have lots and lots of problems. Throttle rate, this is where you get into the throttle field tuning. For the most part, I like to leave these all the way up for a majority of my applications only because that is linear. There's, there's no 
monkeying from the, the speed control, so to speak. It's just one-to-one -one throttle rate. When you turn this down, you start to decrease the response. So it gets less than one-to-one, -one, and the lower you get, the slower the throttle response or the throttle feel is gonna be. So for drag racing, a lot of guys turn this all the way down to like value number one, and they start working their way up as traction comes up. So something to think about there. But for the most part, average applications, throttle rate 30 is gonna be linear throttle response and kind of what you want. If you do have like, I don't know, if you're trying to tune around shutdowns or it's too aggressive, or maybe the throttle feels real jumpy, you can start to lower this guy as well. Uh, throttle curve. You can get in here and make custom curves when you connect this either to the app or through the PC, and you can select those through here. Uh, so if you have one preset, you can go to that if you needed to, but you can't really adjust the custom curve through the box. You have to use the app and the OTA, or like I said, the USB link where you plug this guy into your PC with a cord, which is tons of fun. Uh, neutral range, this is your dead band of your throttle. So if you've got a worn out radio or the throttle and the brakes seem to be inconsistent or twitchy, so to speak, off of neutral from your throttle, you increase this. If you have the reverse turned on and the reverse isn't real consistent, you'll increase this setting. If you want more kind of off neutral response to the throttle or the brake, then you would decrease this setting. It just narrows up that, that free range between the two items. Initial throttle. Now, this is a new one that's come along to compensate for super tall gear ratios and spec turn motors having a little bit of a delay when you apply throttle. It allows you to fine tune the very initial throttle feel when you just barely touch the trigger and the motor starts. Sometimes for some of the spec motors and the high timing and the high gearing, you got to kind of lean into it a little bit. And so people would start to feed in throttle trim and that makes the drag brakes inconsistent. So initial throttle it allows you to tune that. For the most part, like 1% is normal. And then if you do have any delays or anything weird, you would slowly start to go. You shouldn't really ever need more than like say three or four, maybe five for the most part, but it goes all the way up there. If you really want to, I mean, some people, they want it to start kind of hard as well. So you can use this to help that. And this will also help a little bit with some of the, the drag race tuning a little bit. It's mostly you're going to leave this turned all the way down for most of it to be like normal throttle feel. It defaults to three, which is pretty non-noticeable for the most part. Uh, next one is coast. This is what I call a run on. If you don't want the car to have any sort of decel whatsoever when you let off the throttle, this can be used to take that away. It's real popular for very slick track applications, maybe dirt oval where you're never really slowing down so that if you do let off the throttle, it has the least amount of effect of letting off the throttle that you can have. Drive frequency, and this does the the core feel of the throttle. Lower frequencies are gonna make the throttle feel aggressive all the way through, or more aggressive, I guess you'd say. Higher frequencies are gonna smooth things out, make it feel a little softer all the way through your range. This can be used to help respond to the motor as well because it uses this frequency to always drive the motor. That's why I say all the way through the throttle range, bottom to the top, mid range, everything kind of changes when you change this one. And like I said, lower is more aggressive, higher is smoother, sorry. Softening value. The softening set of settings are like a current limiter. So I use this for when I'm running motors that are too fast for my own good and I'm having a hard time with throttle control coming off the corner or even mid-range stuff. This allows it to, to take away the power delivery a little bit. Then it's adjustable a couple ways. You can set how much softening you have and you can set how far through the throttle range you have as well. So what that does is you can turn it way up and then have it only affect a very small percentage of the throttle or you can have it affect a ton of the throttle as you need. And it allows you to kind of get used to the power because you can slowly back those guys down and eventually hopefully turn them off so you have unleashed the beast. Drag brake is brakes at neutral. This is not brakes for drag racing. When you want to coast, and have brakes when you're when you're letting off the throttle, and this is where you're allowed to or you set that, and it's adjustable in percentages, obviously. The drag brake rate is also a new one. This is how fast those drag brakes apply. So normally you'd let off the throttle, and you go to neutral, and the brakes would come right on. This allows you to change that. You can make them come on faster or slower, so you can really fine tune how your drag brakes come in. I think it's very cool. We, we had that a lot in the rock crawling, so it's nice to have here. Uh, brake force, this is like your push brake force, or if you wanted to turn the brake strength down overall, that can be done here. 
uh, brake rate is much like the throttle rate. It changes how linear it is. All the way up it is going to be most linear. And if your brakes feel very snappy or aggressive, or maybe you can't ever apply them slow enough, you, you start to lower this setting. Brake frequency, much like the throttle frequency, controls how aggressive or smooth they respond through the entire range, from initial to mid to all the way through. If you need it to be a, a massive change to the feel, then you can do it here as well. Uh, brake control. These guys have... You just have to try this stuff to know what you're going to like. For the most part, traditional is what everybody's been using, but sometimes the other setups are nice because you get a little bit of everything, and brakes are one of those things that everybody... I, I mean, I, I hate to not be able to tell you which one's better or for worse for each application, but the truth be told, I, know I just leave it as traditional all the time because for the most part, the other brake adjustments are way more than enough for me. Uh, boost timing is electronic timing applied from the speed control through an RPM range. So this allows you to adjust how much of that boost timing in degrees and then how it activates. You can do it uh, through an RPM range or, which I think is pretty cool, there's an auto feature. So the man in the box or the little brains of the speed control look at the RPM ramp up of the motor and they apply the timing as it allows, which is you know, safe, so to speak. Um, if you have it set to auto, the other, the next couple settings don't work because this is the boost timing start RPM. So this is where the timing starts to apply. And then the next one is where it ends. So you can control the RPM range of where your boost timing gets applied. Drag race guys are real familiar with this. For the rest of us, it can be used at a little bit of top end. Sometimes if you have some sections of the track that are longer than others, you can add some mid-range here. And the best way to know your RPMs is to use the data login. You can look at the max RPM of the motor and use that to kind of figure out where you need to be with these RPM settings. Uh, turbo timing is a little more simple. Turbo timing is the same type of deal. It's electronic timing that overdrives the motor to make it faster. But this is done after full throttle only so once you get to full throttle and you're pinned that's when the turbo starts to kick in now it's not at all controlled by the rpm so if like you're in the throttle too soon or whatever this is just going to boost the the, the the or going to boost it's going to apply this turbo timing all of the time so it can be safer and more dangerous kind of at the same time but you have your amount of turbo timing and then you have your delay and that's after full throttle so you don't want it to kick in right away all the time sometimes you do sometimes you don't this allows you to adjust how long after or how soon after, depending on what, how you want to say it, it, full throttle, the turbo starts. And then the turbo increase rate is how quickly it applies the amount of timing. So for in this example, if I had 24 degrees as my am amount, it would take 0.2 seconds for that apply because it does 12 degrees for every 0.1 seconds. And that allows you to fine tune how hard or soft the timing gets applied. So if you have a lot of timing, you can apply a fast or slow or vice versa type of deal. And then the decrease rate for on the track applications, if you were to take the timing away too fast, like you're going through the high speed section, you let off the throttle and you go to get back on it. If the timing's not all still there and the motor didn't slow down very much, it's going to actually apply to a different throttle position later. So this allows you to make sure that how the car is decelerating matches the timing removal from those high RPMs. If you're going on a track that slows down real fast, real hard, you would run this as a higher setting so it takes the timing away faster. If you're on a high-speed track, you'd use this as a lower setting to take the timing away um, more gradually or slower. Uh, and then you got your good old factory restore. This allows you to reset all the settings. If you got it the way you don't like it, you can do it there. Um, this allows you to change the preset profiles. The speed control has several profiles in there and you can set those all and select them here so you can kind of hot swap tuning and then it does have the data logging showing you at the end so it shows you your maximum esc temperature your maximum motor temperature your minimum battery voltage and your maximum rpm and then you get back around to the beginning so that is the quick and dirty on what all these settings do in a very very brief run through on the timing I would say small changes are always going to be safe. Stay away from the turbo and the boost unless you really get into that stuff a lot and be prepared to know that you can get it wrong when you start ch changing a lot of boost and timing. It, it can be real bad. And don't forget, you do have to hit save in order for any of your changes to stick. You can do it after every setting. Uh, that's the safest way to do it because it only takes a second. Like, bang, you're done. It's like, there you go. And then when you're all set, you just turn the speed control off. I said 
turn the speed control off and you can unplug it. There you have it, folks. If you do have any questions, comments, or concerns, please shoot us an email, northamerica at hobbywing.com. Thanks for watching, everybody. We will see you next time.